Welcome to Landau in South Wales. It's tight, it's twisty, it's the home of the Welsh Karting Championships. But this weekend, it's the venue for the Premier Karting Series in the UK. This is the Stevenage Sheet Metal Super One British Karting Championships. With a new format in the championship in 2015, we see different classes varying from round to round. Now, at this round three, we've got Junior TKM and TKM Extreme appearing for the first time, and the X30 classes for the very first time in the championship, X30 for junior and seniors as well. Let's have a look at the ones I think are going to be the ones to watch this season. Junior TKM features two of the top four seeds from 2014 and it's a toss-up who will take the Junior TKM crown and a whole season of free racing in the Super 1 Championship next season as the main prize. Matthew Graham is seeded three and chased the leaders down towards the end of the season putting in some sparkling performances. The four seed is Matthew Rangarido, who came out on top of Matthew Graham at the final round of the championship last year, finishing second with Graham in third. I think someone called Matthew could win the title this year. I'm going with Rangarido's experience. If you want an outside each way bet though, look for someone who impressed me at the TKM Festival last year. Matthew Taylor finished fourth in the Elite Final and with none of those who finished above him in the series for 2015, Taylor is definitely one who could upset the seeds. In TKM Extreme, a small field is headed by the 2014 champion Joe Forsdyke, always a front runner. However, James Ogden will be looking to put right the wrong he feels came his way in 2014 by taking the crown this season after finishing as vice champion last time. For an outside tip though, look for Matt England to come to the fore in 2015. The TKM scholarship winner racing in Super 1 for the first time last season finished the championship with a podium at the final round and will be looking for wins this season after that experience improved him as a driver last year. I'm really pleased to see him back and I'm not ruling him out as a potential champion. It's the first time in the championship for the X30 classes, so who catches my eye in the junior class first of all? Well, the Super 1 stalwarts who have chosen to move from cadets to the junior X30 class this year include Matthew Hopcraft and Thomas Pegram. But look for Harry Platten to be a front runner. He's been in good form running up to this opening round for junior X30 and is definitely a potential winner. In Senior X30, look for the old mucker Dean Hale to be a front runner this year. He first came to my attention as a cadet at the Huntington Kart Racing Club meeting more than 10 years ago. He's gone on to be a contender every year in whatever he chooses to race and this year will be no different. If William Hills were making a book on this class though, the favourite would be the former Welsh Rotax champion Josh Collings. If Hale is going to take the title this year, it's Collings he has to beat. Of the rest, it's a toss-up, but look for Jamie Flynn's experience to make him a potential winner in 2015 of races, if not the title. Plenty of other classes coming up in this two-hour programme, and earlier I caught up with some of the drivers I think will feature in some of those races. Joining me is the young man new to karting in the last 12 months, Jake Douglas. Now, Jake, tell us a little bit about your history in karting, first of all. It's quite interesting in how you started. Yeah, well, I bought my first kart from John Hoyle, uh, and then once I'd outgrown that, after having some good fun on it, we moved into the X30 class and joined S8 Racing, and I've sort of been progressing from there, really. And you started, I think, the first time you ever sat in a kart was, uh, was a corporate kart on, uh, in, in Spain? Yeah, my first time in a kart was in a corporate kart in Spain, like you say, and I posted the fastest lap of the session so I always wanted to move it on from there. Okay so you've come come out of there and then decided to get your own kart, you've, um, you're into X30, you've had uh, a good season at Trent Valley Kart Club I think, I think you won the, um, the, I think you were the best novice overall there weren't you last year? 
Yeah, out of all of the novices, I collected the most points and had one race to spare by the end of the season. So I took the novice trophy home for that season. OK, and what about Super 1 this season? That's obviously a big step up in, in class, lots of competition. Uh, what are you hoping to get out of this season? Just to progress more and learn a bit more racecraft and just generally have some fun with it as well. And what would you what would you be happy with as a result this year? What are you looking for as a you know as a target? Sort of aiming for in the top half of the field and maybe take a podium if I can somewhere. Okay, well good luck. Thanks. Now, the last time we saw the Honda Cadet class, it was Alex Lloyd who took the win by just one hundredth of a second from his teammate Oliver Clark. But Lloyd did not cross the line first. The race was won by Nicholas Reeve, but he was excluded from the results after failing to appear at scrutineering. I asked Alex earlier if he was disappointed at not crossing the line first and being pictured on top of the podium for the press. Well, yeah, it was quite annoying, but anyway, I won, so I'm happy. OK, um, what about this weekend? I think you've been having a few problems this weekend, haven't you, so far? What's been going on? Well, the first heat, I didn't do very well. I had a few car issues. And second heat, I got into the lead on the last lap and I got taken off by, I don't know, but oh well. OK, so you're starting at the back of the grid, I think, for the pre-final. Uh, of course, where you finish in that final depends where you start the televised final. But I guess it's an opportunity for you to... Look good, I guess, coming from the back, but that's what you're going to have to do, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll try my best, but we'll just see what happens. Sam, you were the championship leader after round one. It's going to take something for you to hold on to that championship lead now. Just tell us some of the problems you've had so far this weekend. Yeah, well, um, we had a bit of a nightmare yesterday come the qualifying heats. Um, all day Friday and Saturday morning, we'd been the fastest, like quite comfortably, by between three and four temps in every session. Uh, we qualified on pole by three temps. I uh, come to the first heat and my clutch cable had um, popped out of the, the where it sits um, to come to start and I had absolutely no clutch. So like, luckily, quick thinking, my mechanic and Scott Allen, who's my nearest rival, his mechanic, um, also gave me a quick hand just to pop it back into place and get me going. Um, obviously, that counted as working on a car on the grid and there was a protest lodged and we ended up being excluded from that heat as a result. Um, Thankfully, we are able to count that as a drop round or dropped heat uh, due to the fact it wasn't a technicality. Um, so that was a bit of a kick in the teeth, but we picked ourselves up, got back into leading the second heat, was leading that comfortably by about a second or so, um, only for the engine to cease. So <laughs> we've gone from, well, what should have been two comfortable wins in the heats, pole for the first final to starting dead last now for the first final. So we've got it all to do. So uh, plum last in the pre-final, first final, a televised final after that, so where you start that final will depend on your result there. Just want to ask you this though, how old are you now? 18. So you're 18, in a, at a time when we see a lot of kids now leaving karting at 14, 15 to go and race cars, you've sort of bucked that trend. I know cars is where you ultimately plan to go, but just explain for the younger kids watching why this should be a class that they should be aspiring to before they move into cars. Well, I mean, in my opinion, moving 14, 15, is, it's like, there are championships you can do where the cars aren't massively fast, but it's still a very young age to be moving. Um, the, thing, the good thing with the gearbox is obviously you learn, you spend a year, even if they only do it for a year, you spend a year learning about the clutch, bite points, things like that for starts, as well as changing gear and m almost like multitasking, I suppose you'd say. Um, and for me, looking to move to cars at the end of the year, I've done it for a few years now, but it's invaluable experience. I mean, it saves a year of learning that in a car when you're going to have huge expense and if you get it wrong you look at writing off a car which is a bit more than getting it wrong on one of these and for me I think it's a valuable class for anyone looking to progress their career um, to develop and hone their skills in terms of like you well even there's four, like front brakes and everything like that all on the pedal um, and it's a very good class for someone to like learn the basics or I suppose the way a car works in some aspects um, as well as honing their skills on starts gear changes, using gears to t rot for rotation and so on. Now the first race of the day due to come up, it's the I-Army cadet race. The championship leader joins me, it's Dexter Patterson. Dexter, you came out of round one with a 10-point championship lead, I think it was. How's it been going this weekend for you so far? Um, it's been okay. We've had some um, 
setups. Um, we went for a few setups. Some didn't work and some did. But um, now it's a bit damper and we seem to be quite quick. You're seventh in the championship last year. Um, who's going to be, I think I know the answer, but who's going to be your main competitor this year, do you think? Um, either Johnny Agger or Harry Thompson. You know, I agree. I think both of those drivers are going to push you all season. What's it going to take for you to hold on to this championship lead for the rest of the season? A long way to go, isn't there? I just need to try to get consistent and not get bad runs so I can still be up high. Well, the racing gets underway after the break. Let's have a quick look at the virtual map of uh, Landau. We come through the start-finish line. That leads down into the hook, the first chicane. Usually action there. Out of the hook, down Bomber Straight, into Surtees, first of all, the left-hander. The right-hander is McGuerta's. The big, long curve is Lancaster Curve. The right-hander then is Charles down Spitfire Straight, into the Dell. Diggers brings you on to the Hangar Straight. Long run down to the final turn on the circuit. That's Raymond's. We're getting underway with racing after the break. Don't go away. 